Stan has uh, gotten the better of me um, in the playoff series, um, you know, before, you know, in his Orlando days. And uh, but it, it's not about me versus Stan. I, you know, uh, it's about his teams versus the teams that I've been on. And, uh, and I'm not having an individual matchup with Stan or individual matchup with Stan Lee or any other Stan <laughs> they can possess. Um, you know, it's about getting my guys ready, and that's all that matters. I don't know what y'all say from that. I don't take anything from it. Put a cheap shot, cheap bomb. Does that make you think that you're in his mind, in his mind or in his head? I'm definitely in his head, that's for sure. That was Stanley Johnson saying he's in LeBron James' head following the Pistons' game two loss. Stephen A., do you like, love, or hate that Stanley Johnson said this? I'm trying to be nice. It was ignorant, so I hate it. Um, I like Stanley Johnson. I like him at Arizona. I like the fact that his mom, who's a former basketball player, uh, actually trained him. I'm quite sure he's had a wonderful upbringing, a wonderful family. I'm quite sure he's a really good guy. Um, I've met him once or twice. Looking forward to seeing him again. Um, it's a talented player, got a bright future. Appreciate the fact that, you know, even before he arrived at Arizona, if I remember correctly, he had a workout with Kobe Bryant, seeking out somebody like that, trying to tap into the level of greatness uh, that, is, that, that, that ultimately uh, reigned over the NBA for so many years. But Stanley Johnson is a rookie. He's 19 years of age. I mean, this brother is basically wearing diapers in basketball parlance. And you're going to talk mess about LeBron James? What are you thinking? I mean, I understand he's got an upside, and Stanley Johnson uh, has got the potential to be something special in this league for years to come. I'm not trying to knock him as a person, as a basketball player, or anything. This is strictly about what you're talking about. You're down 0-2 in the series. LeBron is averaging 24 and a half during the series. You understand he shot 50% from three-point range last night. He finished with 27 and 6 or whatever it was. You mean you in his head. And not only that, he's a four-time league MVP. He's a two-time champion. He's universally recognized as one of the top two players in the world, and that's after definitively being the number one player in the world for several years over the last several years. There's a level of deference and respect. You don't have to bow to him. You don't have to fear him. It doesn't mean you don't challenge him or anything like that. But you are 19 years old. You are a puppy. And you want to do this? Particularly when LeBron is coming to your house tomorrow night to play you yet again in a playoff game? I just, it, it, it just reeks of, of, of ignorance Obviously, youthful ignorance, not ignorance like he's dumb or anything like that, because I'm not trying to imply that, but just being young and a bit beside yourself and not understanding the level of decorum that comes with playing this game, particularly against stars who are tried and proven. I just thought it was very, very unwise and ill-advised for him to say if this were a Reggie Jackson or somebody else, even though I wouldn't approve of it then either, it would be for different reasons. But in the case of Stanley Johnson, you're a puppy in this business, man. You know, do you elevate your game and your skills before you open your mouth? That's all I'm saying. I think you're being a little too hard on Stanley Johnson. And like you, I, I like his game. I like his attitude. I like I his like body his language. He's not afraid. He has made four or five threes that he shot in these first two games, obviously both Detroit losses at Cleveland. I clearly did not love the impact and the timing of what he said. And obviously, to your point, this kid looks all-time ridiculous saying he got inside LeBron's head after LeBron torched him because LeBron went six for six when Stanley Johnson was guarding LeBron last night. And as we all know, Cleveland shot Detroit out of the gym last night. It was 107 to 90, thanks in large part to a playoff record tying 23 point shots made by the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
And when, as you know, Stephen A., if J.R. Smith goes seven for 11 every night from three, Cleveland's going to win the championship. They'll be Golden State, but as you know, probably not going to happen every night, but it happened last night. So back to this kid. I, I think he's reflecting the attitude that is being taught and encouraged by his coach, Stan Van Gundy. That, that whole attitude of, we ain't afraid of no LeBron. And back to the point that we heard LeBron make, you remember this well, Stephen A., 2009, Stan Van Gundy was the architect of one of LeBron's most embarrassing playoff losses. Remember, he hit the shot heard round the world to win game two in Cleveland, to even that series at one all, and everybody said, here comes LeBron. We got a collision course between Kobe and LeBron in the NBA Finals. Kobe got there. LeBron didn't make it because they promptly lost games three and four in Orlando. They went home and won game five, and then they were eliminated in six games by Stan Van Gundy, whose team, by the way, shot 42% from three in that series, basically rained threes on LeBron's head. So Stan is, is preaching and teaching, don't be afraid. He does have his weaknesses, and, and go hard at him. Don't back off from him. So I liked what Stanley Johnson said about, I wish LeBron would do his talking before the game and not as they're pulling away in the game, because that's what happened last night as they were pulling away. I, I, again, I, I don't think, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that Stanley got inside LeBron's head, but, but it, I, I think he did get a little under his skin because that bump, I, I think LeBron went out of his way to bump that kid just to say, hey, you have not arrived yet. Not in my house will you treat me like that. So he did, he did acknowledge him enough to go bump him. And then I, I thought LeBron was, uh, again, he, he was playing hard last night because he gave that angry dunk face after that, that early dunk. Because remember, Detroit got up by 10 early in that game. And I think LeBron was paying a lot of respect to an eight seed. And then later in the game, it was still a little dicey, but LeBron made his first three. And to, to Stanley's point, hey, that's not normal for LeBron. I remind everybody, all season long, for almost the whole season, LeBron was the second worst three-point shooter in the league. And he made one, and then he's, you remember, he's backing down the court. And Marcus Morris hadn't come out to guard him at the three-point line. He's giving him that look, if we could see it like, you didn't guard me at the three-point line? No, that's their game plan. They're not going to guard LeBron. They're going to dare him to shoot threes. So, so the kid's on to something. His pride was hurt because LeBron bumped into him, tried to sort of run over him. And he's standing up for himself after the game. I get you, wrong place, wrong time. But I just like the guts of it. I like the backbone of it. And it shows me Detroit will not go quietly in this series when they go to Detroit. Let's bring a couple of things into consideration. Let's backtrack to the 2009 Eastern Conference Finals when Cleveland lost to Orlando. When LeBron hit that shot heard around the world, as you so yeah. eloquently stated it, in Game 2, the Stan Van Gundy that beat LeBron from there on was the same LeBron that scored 41 the next game, 44 the he game did. after that, 37 the game after that, and then in the closeout game when Dwight Howard had 40, LeBron had 25 yep. in that game, which was basically his last, you know, his next to last season in Cleveland. What I'm saying is Stan Van Gundy won because he had Dwight Howard surrounded by sizable shooters. You had a Rashad Lewis who could shoot, but he was 6'10". You had a uh, uh, Hito Turner. Glue who could yep. shoot. He was 6'7". You had a Mikel Petris and a Courtney Lee and these boys, all 6'5 and above, who could shoot. So you surrounded him with shooters. And what you had with LeBron, when LeBron was busy doing his thing, you had Mo Williams and Delonte West and Anderson Varadrao Var Var and Zadrunas Ugorskis, who was as slow as a snail with arthritis. Not that snails can have arthritis, but you get my point for elocution. The point that I'm trying to make to you is that there were better players, particularly with the system that Stan Van Gundy was employing at his disposal than LeBron had at his disposal. Now we fast forward to now. I'm not saying in any way that Stanley Roberts should bow down or back down to LeBron or anything like that, or that he shouldn't follow his coach's lead in terms of not being intimidated by LeBron showing that LeBron has weaknesses and indeed you could possibly get to him but when you are 19 years of age and you've done 
close to nothing in this league yet. I believe that Stanley Roberts has tremendous potential. Yeah. And I think that he's going to be a very gifted player. And you know how I feel about Stan Van Gundy as a coach. I think he is exceptional. And he's a no-nonsense, tell-it-like-it-is kind of guy, my kind of guy. I love that about him. All I'm saying about Stanley Johnson is, is that you're talking about LeBron James here. And who are you? Whatever you're going to be, yep. you're not that yet. You could keep your mouth shut and just go out on the court and go at him fearlessly, as opposed to giving quotes about you being inside his head, which, by the way, are in the aftermath of you losing not one but the first two games of a playoff series in which you are in danger of getting swept. I'm just saying. Okay. You got to know it. better. I, I got all. it. The kids' pride was raw because I think their whole locker room was raw last night because, remember, they were up 10 in the first quarter. They were up 5 in the second quarter. They were up 5 in the third quarter, and they got shot out of the gym by a playoff record 23-point shots. So my point is that they thought they were better than that. Like, they, they hung in better than the, the final score indicates, which is why I, I get that they're, they're just saying we're not – we're not going away here. We're not going to lay down for LeBron James. I don't believe I don't believe they will lay down either, but maybe they shouldn't lay down for J.R. Smith because last time I checked, he's the one that hit seven three-pointers last night. Yeah. No, I know, but but how, is he going to do it again? Will he do that in game three well, and four? I'm, I'm, does, I'm, I'm just saying, maybe that, wall, their, may, maybe that should be their concern instead of LeBron. Le, okay. J.R. Smith did drop seven three-pointers last night. I, I, just, I said that, but remember during the finals last year, how many APBs did you put out for J.R. Smith during the Absolutely. finals? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. But, this is, but this is the first round, and it's the Detroit Pistons, not the Golden State Warriors. Know your position. Got it. In his last five games against the Cavs, Johnson has averaged over 16 points per game in 36 minutes. And you rattled off some heights earlier, Stephen A. 6'7". We have someone here who fits that category, and he's not an NBA player, future NFLer. We have a very special guest. Paxton Lynch is here. Come on out, Paxton. Can he shoot threes? I want to know. I bet he can shoot threes. Can you shoot? He's got style, try. that's for sure. Memphis quarterback. Well, how are you doing? Good to see you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us. What's going on, man? Nothing much. We'll talk to you in just Everything. a minute. We'll get okay. you a chair, too. Sounds good.